Welcome, beautiful seeker, to the existential ship. This is Gemini Terrascope for February. The moon is actually in Gemini as I'm, as I'm recording this. And I woke up in the morning with my mind racing. I'm like 10,000 miles per second. So I was like, yep, yeah, it's Gemini time. Let's see what's up. A lot of energy in your fellow air sign Aquarius, which will affect you. I feel like it will kind of give more space for your thoughts and, you know, nature to flow more freely. You're good with the air element. It makes you feel light and free and easy. Things start to make more sense. Maybe you've been feeling like things were just not making sense in the past. I don't know how long. And now things are just kind of, whether you like them or not, whether it's perfect or not, still it kind of just click with your way of thinking, with how you perceive life, with how you move in the world. It's a bird in the air as opposed to a bird in the water, right? Ten of Wands, but it's been heavy. You've taken a lot upon yourself, a lot of responsibility. And now you need to kind of somehow have it all play out in the best way possible. I see a little bit of a juggler, like the somewhat of a two of pentacles, like trying to do so many things at once. January has brought up a lot of things to take care of for you. And I think a lot of it is actually good things where you're just step after step making it work. But these are things that are based on your growth and aspiration and progression. So although it might be tiring, it's also exciting. You're getting yourself there. Seven of Pentacles. And you're being smart with your resources, with where do I put what. Where do I invest what? You're being diligent and hardworking. And I see you constantly thinking, constantly, constantly maneuvering your next step, page of pentacles, even making lists. Like every day, morning till night, okay, what's the next best step? What's what's the plan? What's what will get me there and what will do this? A lot of focus. Three of Wands, because you have a vision, you have a horizon, you have a direction, you know where you want to get yourself towards. You know what it takes. Right now it's a little strenuous, but it's worth it. And going into February, most of the burden of this will be dropped. You will figure out most of it. And then you'll be left with the things that are lighter, breezier, fun, more exciting. You'll take care of, you know, the detail, the, the labor. And you will get there. And you'll get to enjoy all that. And you know it right now as I'm telling you this. And that's what gives you strength and determination to keep going. Show me more for Gemini for February. 
Oh my goodness, the Empress. You're working for your um, abundance. You're working for your luxury. You're working for your comfort. You're doing the hard labor right now so you can then enjoy it. And come mid-February top, you're already sitting there in whatever thing you've been so so focused on and devoted to it's also two threes we're, we're moving to more flow um, fun I see you really really satisfied with yourself in February like feeling proud for some sort of an accomplish uh, possibly several accomplishments where you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. Oh my God, how did I do all that? <laughs> Maybe you have a very short amount of time to get a lot of things, you know, worked out or figured out, which is why you're so, so focused on the detail. Five of Pentacles, that's a very interesting thing to have right after the Empress. They speak of the complete opposite. The the Empress is um, fertility, it's um, abundance. Five of Pentacles is feeling bare, it's feeling lack, feeling like you can't create. I don't know if it's like something that comes back to haunt you that you've had to deal with in the past, could be a mindset, a lack mentality. Um, some sort of lack of resources that you feel like you're experiencing. It's like your 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 essence and your energy are like somewhere up high there with you know with high standards. You know what you're worth. You know where you want to go. You know what you want to do. You know how you want to dress. You know how you want to look like. But then maybe you don't have enough resources or you feel like you don't have enough resources and it's a, a, a big, you know, oxymoron. Like, um, it's one thing to, to feel like you're not worthy and then not have resources and then at least the mind and the spirit are kind of align and there's no chaos there it's it sucks but there's no chaos there's harmony within the disharmony but within the experience of disharmony but when you know your worth and you know what you want and you know that you can be there and you feel like your energy should be there and yet you're from for tangible reasons for financial reasons for whatever reasons you're, you're kind of feeling stuck it's very frustrating um and I see you making strong decisions, justice at the bottom of the deck, being, yeah, we're not gonna take them because it's too much. If it, will, if it will wanna come out, it will come out. But you're going to be, Gemini, I, I see you making really strong decisions this month of February. Like you're determining your, your fate, you're determining your future. You're cutting out, I feel like you're cutting out this bare feeling of like praying to have and feeling like you don't have the High Priestess. Instead of praying for having, which is basically energetically and, and psychologically acknowledging that you don't have, right? You can't ask for something that you want when you, unless you don't have it. So you place yourself energetically in, in the frequency of a place that I don't have, as opposed to the High Priestess, where you go into that space and work work it the other way around meaning instead of i don't have this i want this okay what is it that i'm getting out of the not having what is it that i'm getting from the sensation of lack or bareness what am i getting out of it really go there don't stop don't be self-righteous open your mind this is magic this is spiritual work this is shadow work okay this is true shadow work not the, oh, I'm sad a little bit. Okay, now am I healed? It's it's deeper than that. It's going to the subconscious. Why are you in a repetition 
of luck. We always get what we wish for. The universe is completely objective. It has um, receptors that pick up on who and what you are, how you think, how you operate, and it just keeps reflecting that back at you. Is it fair? No, I don't think it's a fair system at all. It's a brutal system, and yet that's the system. So work with it. If you can't beat it, join it. And that's how you get out of it. The only way out is in. I repeat it again and again and again. So go to that place of the mystery of what is it about it that you enjoy. Of not being able to, of not having, of receiving the short end of the stick, whatever. What does it give you? What kind of righteous indignation maybe it, it gives you? I mean, where does it put you in the conversation about justice and inequality and all those things? It puts you in a higher rank where you have the right to talk about these things because if you have money and if you have abundance and if you are self-worth, you can't preach. Yes, you can because you've been there, you've experienced, and then you are able to now help others. You will be able to help others snap out of the places that you've been in, but only after you snap out of it. Lead by example. And if someone tells you, oh, now you're in this and this status or place in, in life, you can't talk about lack or you can't talk about harsh hardship or difficulty. Tell them to shut up or just ignore them. Yes, you can because you've been there. And you got yourself out of it. So you get to talk about it more than anyone who's still stuck in there. Okay, because they'll just help other people maintain that cycle. But if you know that cycle... And you snap out of it but going by going into it because here's what happens here's here's how the the mind is amazing and horrible at the same time it's annoying but it, it but it's also impressive okay when you admit to yourself and acknowledge and go into the sensation of it from the heart and from the gut not just from the mind it's not about just saying the mantra it's really feeling it and owning it and admitting it to yourself if you really go to that place that enjoys that lack now, lack can be finances, it could be love, it could be anything, okay? Whatever it is that it allows you to get out of it and just relish on it, just devour that sensation. Yes, I am poor because it allows me to preach to others and I feel really, really, and that makes me feel very powerful. See, it's always somehow, directly or indirectly, in, in subtle subconscious, pursuit of power. Not in ways of corruption and control of others, but self-empowerment. The universe wants you to be powerful because you are powerful and all you have to do is acknowledge it. Acknowledge that you are, acknowledge that you want to. Even when you're not powerful, it, it gives you power in one way, shape or form. So how about just acknowledge that power and get it in a different way instead of getting it vicariously through not having them be like, I don't have and so I can talk. It's just an example, by the way. You can have many, many other benefits to not have you. Okay? When we're sick, God forbid, we get to finally maybe have people care about us, call us, visit us, think about us. This is not to blame anyone for whatever it is you're going through. We're all going through hardships. It's not a blaming game. It's a very difficult thing what I'm guiding you to do right now. Okay? You gotta really work with your brain. But try. Figure out what is it that it's giving me, being in this five of pentacles, needing to ask, needing to, needing, needing. What does it give me? Okay. And then instead of fighting it or mocking yourself or judging yourself, no, no, no. Write it down. Enjoy it. Make it into a story where you're the lead character, you're the hero or heroine and enjoy what it gives you really feel it sit with it and feel it and when you enjoy something immediately it raises its frequency you raise your own frequency so ironically enough when you enjoy lack it's no longer lack because you enjoy it you're not suffering and then you're not really getting anything you're not getting the hit out of it the whatever hit you realize that you're getting from being in a lack now that you're enjoying it and relishing on it and being like, oh, it's exactly what I want and I've asked for it in one way, shape, or form. Subconscious, of course. I'm not saying that consciously you've asked for it. Of course not. 
Okay, but if, if it was all about whatever we consciously ask for, none of us would be in lack, okay? And yet, So once you enjoy something, it's no longer suffer, it's no longer frustration, and then it's gone. And energy will align with it. The money that you need will come with it. The connections that you need will come with it. The love and the attention will come with it. The health and vitality will come with it. Of course you have to... <laughs> and it's wholesome, right? you got to also do the actual practical things. Once you do all that, Okay, now apply for that way better paying job position. Do the actions. And the boundaries or the blockages will no longer as much be there because it's no longer a blockage. You've, you've, okay, you know what? This is just a rant that you should just go and watch my 13th element video um, um, the true secrets of manifestation okay i think it was my first 13th element um uh, video i have a playlist 13th element go watch it true secrets of manifestation it's an hour plus where i go into detail helpful let's move on we have here the empress and the high priestess two of the most powerful women in myth and in tarot Okay, they are goddesses of life and death, of birth and, and death. Beginnings and endings, the seasons. Knowledge, both of the physical and of the mental and of the spiritual. They are mother and daughter. And yet this five of pentacles in between. Oh, King of Cups and Six of Pentacles. So good. We jump right back up from Five of Pentacles to Six of Pentacles with this King of Cups. Someone enjoys um, playing, emo playing someone emotionally because it gives them that sense of worth that they lack of okay it's like um, you know when you play someone and um, have them chase you around or worship you or do things for you because you need constant um, validation okay if you'll do the work that I'm telling you you won't be in the place that needs constant validation and thus you won't emotionally play someone now, this could be the other way around. It doesn't have to be you. This could be someone that you're dealing with. And, you know, now you're getting an answer as to why they're doing that. So don't feed into it, right? Don't play into that because then you're just enabling that method of theirs of covering for a sense of lacking with having people chase them around, right? Um, It's playing hard to get and playing people. It's dating a few people it's a, or having a partner where you're constantly coercing or making them feel guilty for all kinds of things they shouldn't really feel guilty over, but they're so sensitive and sweet and kind-hearted, so they they give you that head of you know apologizing or giving you more or belittling themselves next to you. Again, when I say to you, it doesn't have to be you. Remember, these are general readings. I could be talking about someone else who's doing that and you're on the other end of the stick, okay? This is just explaining circumstance. But of course, if you feel like it might be something that you're doing, then consider. Okay? I don't I don't know you. You you tell you. You tell you where you stand in this. Also, regardless, wow, the death card. And this this is the transformation huge change it's really going into your dark space and hair at the bottom of the deck it's really going within and admitting to yourself whatever it is there is for you to admit to yourself and that's where that's where the breakthrough come from that's where you no longer need 
exterior validation. Okay, someone here really needs a lot of validation and it's extorting, it's almost like extortion of someone um, that cares about them and, you know, constantly tries to give them that. Also, some of you are going to receive an income that will create, will help the change. In a way, will kind of help you feel better about yourself or that person. It will help them feel better about themselves. I'll just say you and, and place yourself, okay? Because I can't keep saying you or them. It's, 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 it's exhausting for both of us, right? So place yourself, okay? So... This could be something coming in that kind of helps really increase the sense of worth and value of this person and that helps that change, that helps them do the work where, okay, I no longer need validation from XYZ because I have ABC that is now honorably mine, you know, kind of thing. I do see someone working really hard for someone else, trying to like help them or prove themselves to them or carry, helping them with their burden, you know, work harder for them. This could be definitely romantic. The chariot, what a beautiful chariot card. <laughs> wow, right after the death card. Okay, there is massive change and massive movement. Um, a huge leap in either lifestyle or romance or a sense of worth and value. It brings with it power. It brings with it um, more freedom. Now it's a process, so this could be February all the way through some of you through July, okay? It's like five months of that, of like where towards the summer you're really feeling all that way more, but it's already starting. It's starting now. It will progress strong, strongly in February. Um, I see someone very, very ambitious that really wants to get themselves out of like either how they grew up or their life circumstance or cycles of lack and they're just... And, and if this is you, then you're really willing to, you're really going for it. You're taking a risk and, and you're doing the energetic, psychological work uh, that I've described earlier. And it's going to work. Some of you are um, going to be victorious on something that you wanted. I think some of you are going to get someone that you are interested in, like, you'll either get like a promise or a commitment or, um, or a connection, something of that sort. Um, guys, this does not apply to those of you who fantasize about a celebrity or someone you've never met. My readings are not meant for um, people who use these readings to stay crazy stuck stalker type of energy it's not for you guys it's for people who actually convey with life who communicates between spirituality and reality okay so if you're sitting at home 24 7 fantasizing about someone you've never met seeing constant twin flame videos about someone that you dream about so you think they're your twin flames even though you, they don't know you, you've never met them. It's, it's, it's your brain, it's psychological dreams. There's a big, there's all kinds of dreams. There are psychological dreams, there are energetic dreams, there are spiritual dreams. There is such a thing, quite common actually, more common than the rest of psychological dream where you just get your fantasies played out. It's also a part of the dream space. 
how do you know? You clear your, your mind and, and focus really hard on your um, core of reality and body of this. The chariot is your instrument that carries your soul in this world. It's how you operate in the world of matter. It's your car. It's your vehicle. Work on your vehicle, on your body, on your brain, on your realistic attitude towards reality, which is the world you're living in as well. You can't go to the spirituality by ignoring the physical because the physical, the reality, is part of spirituality. It's the foundations to it. Okay? So now that I've got that rant out of the door, for those of you who actually interact with the world or have interacted with someone romantically, truly, not written them a lot of DMs and they don't and they never answer you. That's not the same thing. I don't even know why I bother explaining this. Like I keep thinking maybe it will help people snap out, but it, they're just they're, it, it, it just pushes some people to even deeper toxicity and delusional uh, behavior. So I don't. Maybe I should just not mention it at all. Anyway, seekers, back to you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just these type of spiritual um, leadings really really help people, but then there are others who just twist and take out of context and force it to say something they wanted to say and they don't actually listen to what myself and other readers say. Some of you, sorry back, I know I've tried to come back to it several times and it keeps like, I guess it needs to be expressed. So bottom line, some of you are going to feel victorious in your love life as well. You're going to feel like but there's also, I have to say, there's also a matter of some sort of dominance. Um, someone really, really likes to feel dominant over their partner or, or even partners if they're dealing with more than one person. They really take, they, they get a lot of energy from that, you know, from having a lot of people kind of give them attention, wanting them... Um, Again, it comes from a sense of lack that if you're relating to that, uh, go back a little like five or ten minutes for the part where I spoke about it and do that work, that emotional work. I'm picking up on a feminine um, that didn't get love and affection from her father figure, so now she seeks it in men, okay? Um, validation. And it can be played, and it could might play out with either having one partner where she constantly just sucks the life force out of them, constantly needing them to prove themselves, always coercion, always guilt tripping them um, to give her more. And of course, she doesn't do it on purpose, obviously, but it's it's what it is. Um, and for some of them, it's it's playing out with seeing multiple people, you know, like dating with more than one person, and just enjoying having you know feeling that chase um, and someone out there thinks that that person is their twin flame because she's the runner oh my god no she has daddy issues and she needs to go through a therapeutic process and no you're not better than her and no you don't need to wake her up you need to wake up. Why are you stuck on someone that is playing you or just using you for attention? Have you asked yourself that? It's everyone. Why don't we try to not wonder why they do what they do and obsess over that and ask ourselves, why do we do what we do? Why are we stuck or into someone who does things like that in the first place if we find it to be problematic? or if we have some sort of judgment towards it, right? It's not to shade you, it's not to shade them. It's not to shade me, I'm a part of this, I'm a human being. We're all doing that, but why are we doing that? And why not redirect instead of gaslighting and think what the other person is doing and why? Look at the self. In this case, there's a self that likes to win, which I like, I like to win too, and they are. For some of you, it comes with an aspect of status, 
and money and achievement and knowledge. There's, this is a lot of power. This is a lot, a lot of power. This is a very strong feminine as well. A very powerful feminine. And it doesn't have to be at all in the type of power dynamic that I've expressed. It could be simple, pure power of spirit, you know, of an, and of influence. Um, so there's two avenues to it. One of it is that some of you are genuinely achieving something. There's also a couple that is really focused on the sex, but isn't really communicating with one another. Queen of Swords. Yeah, someone is going to speak it as it is. Going towards the last third of the month. They're going to have like a moment of very sharp realization and admission to the situation. And they're going to call something out. Um... It's like, uh, yeah, and then they're going to have to think, Four of Swords. Um, this Queen of Swords is going to realize something about the dynamic that they're involved in, the truth of the matter, her part and the other person's part, right? Um, and then they're going to go into like some, st some mode of like, okay, I need to clear my head, I need to figure this out with myself. Another aspect of it is after achieving something that took a long time and it was very hard, there's the need to rest. And now we have uh, the hangman or the hangwoman. It's beautiful cards. Someone is going to realize something uh, uncomfortable, an uncomfortable truth about a dynamic that they're in. Uh, and they're going to find themselves contemplating and taking time and they might come to a realization that some sort of sacrifice needs to be made. They need to either end something or leave something or stop doing something. There's a change of perspective. Someone realizes, okay, this is why I've been doing this this way. Or this is why I've been acting like that. Or this is why I've been wanting this. Or this is why I've been like that. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Now, this could be you. This could be someone else. Um, and they're going to... And, it's, and this is coming into Pisces season, meaning after the 20th and on of February, right? Um, okay, the, I'm picking up on someone being like, okay, I need to change my pattern, my behavior. Um, it's a pattern that used to um, be, it, it was done based on a type of perception. And now that the perception and the understanding of it of the situation has changed, then now the pattern needs to change. This person realizes that they need to change a behavior according to the realization that they've had. Um, one last card for Gemini for February. Knight of Cups. So, so this, interestingly enough, will actually empower you on a real level. It won't be... Um, empowerment that is you know coming from a place that tries to fill in voids but rather from real flow of the heart like a, a, a true kind self kindness to self with kindness to self understanding of certain reasons behaviors um Everyone who said bless you, appreciate you. Okay, that was fun. <laughs> Is my nose red? Oh well. Um, and it's like once that perspective changes, it's almost feeling really easy to change a behavior in accordance. You're like, oh right, why did I ever? Because when the mindset changes, it, things get easier, you know. Things that used to be very complicated and difficult to do are now like at a flow because there's a connectivity to the heart. What the heart truly wants, right? As opposed to what an, 
an aspect of our ego is trying to fight for to compensate and not to shade ego it's trying to help you it's trying to protect you trying it's trying to fill up a void um, but that void needs to be filled up by your own heart and if it's not if your heart is scared or closed off then the ego steps in to help you know it's not its job it's, it's supposed to be an understudy <laughs> because the heart is like sleeping because it's in pain so the ego, the sense of self, and the sense of you know, you know, the, the vessel of the world of, of, for you in this world. I mean, okay, okay. I need, I need to protect Jemmy. I need to help Jemmy operate and succeed and work in the world. Okay, how do I fill up this void? And then the ego does what it knows how to do. Until you realize that, and you say, "Thank you, ego. I really, really appreciate your help." I love that you're so protective and helpful. Thank you, but it's not your job. You can go back to doing the things you need to do. I'm going to turn myself upside down, meditate, think, feel, shadow work, all that. And I'm, and I'm going to wake up my heart. I'm going to let my heart take over this part. Okay, let's pull animal spirit and then we'll give you spiritual homework for uh, the month. The spiritual homework is a major arcana that I will pull from the tarot. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to do with the reading, but it will obviously have to do with your energy and what is most advised for you to, you know, the type of energy to harness and to kind of work with throughout the month of February and also. By default, it will help increase frequency for the collective because it's shamanic work, it's spiritual work, and what you do affect others as well. It's something that I've been doing that you guys seem to really like. Um, so, yay. And it's it's up to you. You don't have to. Okay? But let's start with animal spirit for Jemmy for February, please. Guys, I'm not, I don't know how to name this reading, so why don't you... You know what? What do you think I should name this reading? Write in the comment the caption that you think is most fitting, and then I will choose my favorite one, and I will name the video. Okay, I will um, pin your comment, say thank you, and yeah, caption this video. Caption your periscope. I like that. Sounds fun. I tried that once, but there was a technical problem with the video that I uploaded, so I needed to download it. For my Virgos, by the way, it was a Virgo reading. I'm sorry, I had to take it off because it, it, technically there was something wrong with it, and so I took off also the extended. I will do a new one for you guys. For those of you who have seen it, you earned two readings. So Anyway, Animal Spirit for Gemini's Place for the month of February. Thank you. The owl, beautiful Hedwig. <laughs> no more. And the eagle. Oh my goodness. Okay. Two um, air elements. Do you, want to, do you want to look? By the way, I'm going to do this reading in the extended. We're going to focus on love. We're going to look deeper into you and this person that you're dealing with, the dynamic with greater detail, and also how things unfold throughout the month. And we'll, after the tarot, we'll do a rune reading. Okay? So stay tuned to your extended. You can find it on Patreon and on Vimeo. All the links are below. Okay. Whoa. I want eagle. This is night, this is day, okay? This is um, inner, this is outer. There is something that you've been holding within you for a very long time, certain knowledge, wisdom, um, internal power um, that is now going to burst out. It's going to be expressed in the world and in your life very strongly it's going to shine bright right but as it happens it will also shine shine light of aspects in your own life that you've been 
because with when you held your knowledge within and was quiet about it, you've held other things within as well. And as you open the door for your knowledge and, and, and energy to shine and be expressed in the world, it's like a Pandora box kind of thing. Other aspects come out as well that were a little bit hidden and now this is the aspects that you're working through. But then it feels so healthy going into the end of February in Pisces season. It feels so calming, like you, you it's just a sense of self-pride. And from simplicity. Once you have, you don't no longer need, right? So what's, once you take care of the lack and what it is you feel like you need to have by realizing that you already have what you ask for, then you'll even have more and then you won't be in like extreme desire and the simplicity of that emotion will feel so abundant. <laughs> I hope that made sense. This is also some sort of news coming in that you've been waiting on for a long time that you intuitively knew will happen and then it happens. This could be something that a leader decides upon. You know, maybe something that is happening in politics or in the government or any changes that are happening right now somehow directly affects you um, and change something. You know, maybe you had to, you know, deal with a certain type of reality in a way that was very inner and and quiet and now it kind of liberates you in a way now this could be a leader of a country a leader of a community a leader of the household um, something is coming through that allows this owl energy step out step from the shadows into the light okay all right guys this was Awesome. Let's see your homework, spiritual homework for the month of February for my seekers for Gemini. Think of energy is Gemini guided to harness throughout the month of February. Some of you are spiritual teachers, some of you are mystiques, uh, occultists of some sort, and harnessing the energy of the High Priestess will guide you to expand that out even more. This could be uh, symbolizing one of your chakras really, really opening up, opening the channel for, for knowledge, or remembering something from the Akashic Records as well. Okay. Um, The High Priestess is one of the most complex cards in the deck because in one, on one hand she represents the entirety of the human condition, on the other hand it's within a human form of a very powerful feminine, okay? Not like the Fool that is more of a um, concept, an abstract, um, an idea, um, you know, a way of life to be led by. The High priest Priestess is that knowledge in physical form and in metaphysical form. She's in the physical realm and in the ethereal realm. It's a very complex, infinite layered type of um, energy. Um, and she carries a lot of wisdom from a lot of ancient cultures, past, present, and future. Um, she rules life and death as Persephone, as queen of the underworld. and. It's, 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 it's not an easy energy to harness because, you know, it's harder to be quiet than it is to act. And it's even more so fine-tuned type of behavior to be able to act without acting, to behave without behaving. 
עשה באפס מעשה והכל מעצמו יעשה. It's from the Tao, it's a do without doing and all will be done kind of energy. Sounds easy, but is it? It's an entire philosophy that requires practice. A lot of it. Um, so I go deeper and in, in-depth in on my class, on Tarot Masterclass for the High Priestess. I will link it below. My Tarot Masterclass is an online course of pre 90 pre-recorded classes. Every tarot gets its own class. You can have all of it at once. You can purchase the entire course, but I build it in a way where you can simply rent or purchase the episodes separately. So if you just want to know about the High Priestess, for this case, for example, if you want to know more of my thoughts, you can obviously go with what you know about the High Priestess, but if you want to know my guidance for it, I will link it below. It's super affordable and friendly. Um, I made it so, I mean, they're renting them separately. And regardless, if you ever have a reading for yourself and you want to know more about a certain card or several cards, you can just refer to my Akashic Library of Tarot um, and just see what I have to say about each card, okay? And for those of you who want to be a Tarochi, an actual Tarochi, and go through a shamanic journey, I, of course, recommend to take all of it, but you absolutely do not have to. I would love to see you in the High Priestess, okay? Let me know what you thought about the class, if you liked it or not, if you are harnessing this energy or not. Share with me, okay, guys? I will see you in a second in the extended. If you're new, subscribe. Press the bell button to receive notifications. Comment your thoughts. Press that like button because it really, really helps spread the message. Um, that's it. I love you. Stay magic. Stay true. Stay true. Mm -hmm.